The topic of today doesn't require an introduction. I doubt there is anyone who hasn't heard of Amazon. We may purchase anything and everything on this platform. Amazon is the most valuable public company on the planet. Let's travel back to Jeff Bezos' garage in 1994, before entering the current Amazon world, to observe how things were done there. Standing in front of the garage, we find it difficult to believe that the huge and well-known Amazon began here. Along with its success story, I'll also share a few other intriguing details you might not be aware of, so stay with me. Please show your support by liking and subscribing. Bezos earned degrees in electrical engineering and computer science from Princeton University. He worked at a bank and a startup in the telecom industry. Amazon debuted in July 1995 as an online retail bookshop. In those early days, Bezos and his first few employees packed books and delivered them to the post office by hand. After nearly 30 years of transformational work for the organization, he retired as CEO. He continues to rank among the five richest people in the world. Bezos' Shadow Since 2021, Andrew R. Jassy has served as president and CEO of Amazon. Jassy completed his studies at Harvard College before going on to complete his MBA at Harvard Business School. Three years after Bezos founded the company in his garage and three weeks before it went public with a valuation of $300 million, Jassy began working at Amazon in 1997. After graduating from Harvard Business School, he began working there. He stated in an interview, I finished my last final exam at Harvard Business School on the first Friday in May 1997 and I began working for Amazon the following Monday. Inspiring, isn't it? When does Amazon history begin? Hey, does anyone know this platform's first name? And why did it switch to Amazon? Bezos wanted to play off the mythical incantation Abracadabra, therefore the company was originally named Cadabra Inc. This choice was swiftly abandoned as his attorney said that Cadabra sounded like cadaver over the phone. Good move. When developing a brand, that's not the most favorable connotation. Bezos read over the vocabulary and considered two possibilities, Amazon and Relentless. However, you are already aware of the winner of this contest. Fun fact, if you enter Relentless.com into your browser, Amazon.com is the next page that appears. The name is set. Now what to sell? He made the decision to launch Amazon by selling books. But what about the rivalry? When confronting well-known rivals like Barnes & Noble, how did Bezos plan to win in the end? No matter where they lived, Bezos wished for all readers to have access to books. He aimed to make Amazon the preferred destination for book buyers worldwide. Despite its modest beginnings, Amazon's history took off with a bang. Within a short period of time, Amazon had clients in all 50 states as well as 45 other nations. Bezos had 250 employees by the end of the year. To accommodate the rising demand, Bezos needed more money. Bezos made the decision to price Amazon's 1997 IPO at just $18 per share. If you were able to secure some shares, you might be sitting on a large sum of money. Currently, the world's largest online retailer sells everything. Amazon accomplished more than simply expanding its product categories. Bezos also began establishing and acquiring subsidiary businesses. It is the year 2006, the Amazon Web Services entry. AWS is a provider of cloud computing services that runs websites for both consumers and companies. Amazon uses AWS snowmobiles, which are secure semi-trucks, to transport massive amounts of data. Thanks to its CEO, Andy Jassy, Amazon Web Services has experienced exponential growth over the past 20 years. There is no mystery as to why Bezos chose Jassy as his successor. When did Amazon start to gain popularity? Number 1. The One-Click Patent You've probably seen this button before while purchasing on Amazon. You probably made all those impulsive purchases because of this button. Yes, we all own that absurd coffee cup that is unnecessary. Bezos patented this one-click purchasing concept in September 1999. However, this invention completely alters the way that people shop online. Other businesses, in particular Barnes & Noble, attempted to implement this technology illegally. They had to answer a lawsuit for patent infringement. Thankfully, the patent ran out in 2017. This one-click buy button can now be used by any company to increase online sales. Number 2. The Birth of Amazon Prime You could get two-day shipping on any order with this subscription for $79 per year at the time. At the time, this was huge and perhaps still is. This brand new pledge sets a new standard for convenience in online shopping. 
and it's the only feature that sets Amazon apart from its rivals. Many stakeholders raised concerns about this business strategy. They feared that the company would go bankrupt due to this membership scheme. However, Bezos disproved the critics. Currently, 150 million Amazon members worldwide benefit from its advantages. Number 3. Amazon Revises Its Bookstore Origins Another significant event was the introduction of the company's first Kindle e-reader. The Kindle e-reader created an entirely new reading experience for its customers. This inexpensive device would encourage more reading as well as more Amazon purchases. Amazon has achieved some amazing success, but it also receives a significant amount of negative coverage. Stick around to learn more. You are all ears, I'm pretty sure. Bezos Stealing Confidential Data After making investments in startups, Bezos has become the focus of accusations of stealing confidential data. In one instance, Amazon made an investment in the hardware startup Nucleus before releasing an Echo product that was directly in opposition to Nucleus's offering. Smaller businesses like Defined Crowd and Vocal Life were allegedly the victims of stolen confidential information. These smaller businesses were unable to compete with Amazon's behemoths. These companies have to scale back or shut down, much like Nucleus. Amazon and COVID-19 Workers at Amazon boycotted in protest of their employer's unwillingness to offer frontline employees who are in danger of losing their lives at work even the most basic rights. Because of the protest, Amazon took the necessary precautions to protect the company against COVID-19. Safety gear, social distance promoting changes, higher pay and routine coronavirus testing for employees are some of these insulating methods. They've also been in a lot of hot water for reportedly having bad working conditions. Loading bay doors were not allowed to be opened to allow fresh air inside the warehouse due to Amazon's concerns over theft. Warehouse workers in Pennsylvania once had to work in 38-degree heat that allegedly caused some employees to suffer from dehydration and even faint. So what did Amazon do? They paid for an ambulance to sit outside on call to cart away any overheated employees. The company eventually installed air conditioning. No matter how big or small the company, employees always have issues with the management. I believe it is preferable to put these problems behind us and celebrate the company's outstanding achievements as the conclusion. It makes sense, doesn't it? Web services, drone delivery and robotics are just a few of the sectors that Amazon is expanding. There is only one man's vision behind this enormous achievement. Yes, Bezos had always pictured the business as a tech behemoth. He even had the slogan printed on t-shirts when he encouraged employees to get big fast for the business. Amazon launched Amazon Go. These physical stores don't have cashiers since cameras immediately charge your account for whatever you put in your cart. The virtual assistant Alexa was introduced by Amazon in 2014, and since then it has worked seamlessly to be built into devices. Select Audi vehicles will have the Alexa assistant built in thanks to Amazon's launch of Alexa experiences for the automobile. Alexa, should I watch Frontline's Jeff Bezos and Amazon documentary? The prompt recognition that question evokes serves as a reminder of the company's strength and reach. The PBS program brilliantly illustrated this in a two-hour documentary that included interviews with a variety of former and present personnel. Bezos was the driving force behind it all. They deliver quickly. In many cases, they offer same-day delivery or, in the worst scenario, next-day delivery. And in doing so, they are cultivating incredible consumer loyalty. They make product reviews public in order to foster insane client loyalty. People were shocked when Amazon first started doing this and asked, Whoa, you would just let anyone review a product? What happens if they say nasty things? Jeff Bezos was like, that's good. If a product is poor, nobody should be purchasing it on our platform. He aimed to establish an open and transparent system for product reviews where everyone could share their thoughts on what they liked and didn't like. It's crucial to remember this because only 20% of your current consumers will account for 80% of your future income. Amazon was founded by Bezos because he followed the regret minimization framework. This framework asks, will I regret not taking this action in X years? When he was considering quitting his day job to launch a tech firm, he pondered the same question. The timeline of Amazon's history shows how Bezos created the multi-billion dollar corporation from his garage startup in 1994 to the present. Yes, Bezos had obstacles to overcome on the road, but it's probably safe to conclude that Bezos doesn't have any regrets. What about you? X years from today, where do you see yourself? 
post a comment below. I'm curious whether any of you will be traveling with me to my destination. Thank you for watching.